If you want to print strong functional parts with engineering grade materials, the Chidi Plus 4 might be exactly what you're looking for, especially if you're not looking to spend Bamboo Labs money. It's big, it's hot, it's affordable, and unlike the early batches, it probably won't try to heat more than just the chamber. Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems, and for the past year or so, the Chidi Tech Q1 Pro has been my daily driver when it comes to FDM printing. That's because the majority of what I print isn't toys or cosplay props, it's parts that actually do something. They need to be strong, dimensionally accurate, and sometimes resistant to heat or impact. And for that, the Q1 Pro has been kind of perfect. Chidi's own high performance filaments are really solid and they do something not a lot of other companies do. They provide full print profiles for those materials in their slicer. Combine that with a reliable chamber heater and you've got a high temp printing setup that just works at a price point that won't break the bank. So when Chidi released the Plus 4 last year, a machine that looked like a straight upgrade in every way, I was pretty tempted. Higher nozzle bed and chamber temps, bigger build volume, expanded material compatibility. On paper, it seemed like exactly the evolution I was waiting for, but then kind of dropped off my radar until a couple months ago when Chidi reached out and asked if I'd like to review one. Now, before we go any farther, I do have to offer a quick apology. This video won't have the usual amount of glamorous B-roll footage of the printer in action. I filmed all of that on my iPhone to an external USB-C drive, and like the genius I am, I managed to delete all that footage from the drive, so unfortunately you'll be stuck looking at my ugly mug more than normal in this one. Anyway, moving on. I prefer reviewing things after they've been out in the wild for a bit, after the bugs have been squashed and the firmware updates have ironed out the early kinks. So with a little digging to see if there were any launch problems, turns out there was a huge one. Early units of the Plus 4 had some serious issues, most notably with the chamber heater system. Specifically, some users reported overheating, thermal runaway, and at least in one unverified but wildly circulated claim, a house fire. From what I could gather, the root of the problem was a failed solid state relay on the board that could allow uncontrolled current to keep heating the chamber long after it should have shut off. Now, that makes it sound like the chamber heater itself was the hazard, but the Plus 4 actually uses a ceramic PTC heating element, which inherently has a physical thermal limit. It can only get so hot no matter how much current is pushed through it. So the more likely scenario and what video evidence suggests is that the solid state relay itself overheated and when you combine that with the plastic body of the printer and poor ventilation if the printer is pushed up against a wall and you've got a recipe for combustion. Chidi has since said the issue has been resolved. New mainboard, updated firmware, improved thermal management, the works, and they assured me that any unit shipped now, including this one, are completely safe. So this review isn't just about how the Plus 4 performs with demanding materials, it's also about whether it's safe to run in your home. I pushed this machine hard, put it in deliberately bad conditions, tore it down and cross-checked what I found with what the community is saying. Let's get into it. The Chidi Plus 4 is a fully enclosed Core XY FDM printer with a generous 305 by 305 by 280 millimeter build volume. It features a second generation 80 watt bimetallic hot end capable of reaching up to 370 degrees, which opens the door to printing advanced high performance materials like PPS, PPA, and PHAT. The heated bed is a six millimeter thick aluminum plate that reaches up to 120 degrees Celsius, topped with a flexible double-sided PEI build surface. The actively heated chamber is powered by a 400 watt ceramic PTC heater and a dedicated turbo fan, maintaining temperatures up to 65 degrees Celsius. Motion is handled by linear rails on all axes, dual independent Z-axis motors, and core XY belt system, allowing for precise, fast movement, 
movement with transition speeds up to 600 millimeters per second and acceleration as high as 20,000 millimeters per second squared. The printer also features a five inch color touchscreen, filament runout and tangle detection, resume on power loss capability, and a built-in 1080p webcam for live monitoring and time lapses. Connectivity options include a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and USB, all that's powered by Chidi's modified fork of Clipper and customized version of Prusa Slicer, preloaded with dialed in profiles for their entire filament lineup. It's clean and stable and is designed to minimize the fiddling and maximize the printing. Setup was refreshingly simple. The printer comes fully assembled and well packaged. After unboxing and peeling off what felt like a full body vinyl wrap, I ran through the quick start guide and touchscreen wizard. Within 30 minutes, I had a plate of production parts printing in Chidi's PPACF. No calibration routines, no nozzle swaps, no filament tuning. That's rare even among so-called ready out of the box machines. This wasn't some calibration cubes. These were actual components I needed and they printed successfully on the very first try. That's the kind of reliability I want when I fire up a printer, especially one in this price range. But setup's the easy part. What I really wanted to know was, has Chidi actually fixed the issue that made people unplug their printers and question their life choices. So I got aggressive. First, I pushed the printer flush against the wall, completely choking off its rear ventilation intake. This is where the chamber draws air and also where the power supply mainboard and motor drivers get cooled. Then I started a multi-hour print in PPACF at high temps across the board, 310C on the nozzle, 110C on the bed, and chamber heater cranked to max. Not surprisingly, the printer overheated. It froze mid-print and became totally unresponsive. But instead of doing something dangerous like catching on fire, it did the right thing. It shut itself down. After a quick power cycle, it resumed the print and then predictably, it overheated again. I repeated the test multiple times and while the outcome was consistent, it was also controlled. This is exactly how thermal protection should behave. No meltdowns, no fried boards, no smoke. After that, I ran prints in less extreme but still difficult environments. I left it running in my 80 plus degree garage for hours on end, no issues. Then I moved to my cold basement, cracked the top panel and ran prints while the chamber heater worked over time. Again, no problems. And when I finally opened up the printer, I confirmed this unit shipped with the revised board and updated relay system. According to a community consensus, this redesign addresses the core issue. I cross-checked against teardown photos in Reddit and Discord groups and found a match. The only reliability annoyance I did hit was with the Wi-Fi. It's limited to 2.4 gigahertz and connection quality was poor enough that I couldn't reliably send files, check webcam feeds, or even load the print queue half the time. It does have an ethernet port, but in my garage or basement, that's not super convenient. So I ended up just using a USB stick like it's 2011. During the review process, I took a closer look and noticed that the Plus 4 actually uses a pretty cheap low gain USB Wi-Fi module, which explains the terrible bandwidth. So I tried swapping it out with a better dual band USB Wi-Fi adapter I had laying around and the upgrade worked flawlessly. I was able to connect to my five gigahertz network. And from that point on, the printer had a fast and reliable connection with no dropouts. Now, in contrast to maybe using subpar components, here's where Chidi consistently gets it right. I've been printing since the early RepRap days, and I know how to tune a printer, calibrate flow rates, and slice a model for optimal layer adhesion. But let's be honest, I'd rather not. I'm not a printer guy. I'm a project guy. A 3D printer is a tool, and I want tools that help me make stuff without forcing me to dive into obscure firmware configs or rebuilding hot ends in the middle of a job or spending hours leveling the bed and dialing in Z height. The plus four 
hits that sweet spot, especially for high temp materials. GD Slicer already has pre-tuned profiles for the engineering filaments I'm using. PPSCF, PAHTGF, Ultra PACF25, all of it. Just load your model, choose a material, maybe adjust the infill of supports, slice and print. That's it. And for materials that cost 150 to $200 per kilo, that simplicity is a big deal. At recalibration, model or failed print is wasted money and wasted time. The plus four didn't waste, it just worked. No tuning, no temp towers, no chasing your tail, trying to figure out whether a failure was from over retraction or under cooling. I didn't print a single calibration model. Every job was a production print and everyone came out usable on the first try. To really test the machine, I used a mix of cheaty and third-party materials and printed mostly functional components, things I actually need for real-world projects and repairs. First up were a couple of automotive parts for my son's car, a cooling manifold and a sensor housing, both printed in Chidi's PPSCF. These parts are going under the hood near the engine block where they'll be exposed to 200 plus degree coolant and constant thermal cycling. So obviously printing them in PLA or even ABS wasn't gonna cut it. The plus fours 370C nozzle and actively heated chamber made it possible. I also printed a pair of headlight brackets using Chidi's PAHTGF, that's their glass filled nylon, which offers great durability. I could have maybe done these in ABS, but I wasn't confident it would hold up long term with all the vibration and heat stress. For some brake work I've got coming up on my truck, I printed a 1 8 inch pipe bender in the same glass filled nylon, and it came out clean, accurate, and solid. I also printed some adapters for my air compressor, and with a little Teflon tape on the threads, it worked perfectly handing up to 150 PSI of air pressure with no problems. Now the parts I use this nylon filament for the most, well, I can't really show you. Not if I want this video to stay, you know, up on YouTube. Let's just say I'm heavily involved in competitive Nerf Blaster competitions, and the Nerf Blaster used in those tournaments often needs custom grips and other replacement parts due to wear and tear. The glass-filled nylon has just the right mix of rigidity, precision, and grip, like like grip tape is baked into the material. And once I printed some custom grips for my Nerf blaster, let's just say my grip got a lot more solid, helping me consistently put more foam on target. Outside of the high temp stuff, the plus four handled everyday materials like a champ. I printed a fantasy castle and a segmented dragon in Creality Hyper Rainbow PLA using the generic PLA profile. They both came out great, which is good news if you need that plastic dragon fix and find yourself unable to just, you know, buy one following the upcoming Etsy purge. I used the same profile for Bamboo PLA Master Chief bust and an Elego Rapid PLA Deadpool bust. No tweaking required. And just for fun, I printed a full set of Crocs in Overture 95A TPU. I used the default TPU profile and while the print wasn't perfect, it finished without any major problems. For a large flexible print like that, I was impressed. Every material I threw at this machine printed well and every part came off the plate ready to use. The GD Plus 4 is a powerful, accessible machine that delivers professional grade results with high performance materials without requiring professional level tinkering or budget. From setup to final print, it just worked. It's fast, consistent, and capable of handling the kind of jobs most printers in this price range just aren't built for. But all of that only matters if you can trust the company behind the machine. Chidi's response to the chamber heater issue wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either. It felt reactive, not proactive. Some customers got quick help and replacement parts. Others ran into dead ends and poor communication. Sending replacement boards that have a different wiring scheme to customers for a DIY replacement was also not great and opens the door to more problems. 
Compare that to how Bamboo Labs handled their A1 cable issue. Early detection, halting sales, clear communication, free repair kits, and a transparent recall process. That's the gold standard. Chidi didn't hit that bar, so even though my unit came with the revised mainboard and performed perfectly under stress, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't bring that history into the conversation. This is a very good machine that comes with a bit of baggage. And if you're the type of user who understands the risk and wants the performance without the bamboo price tag, the plus four could be a great fix, but at their core, 3D printers are potentially dangerous machines and the safety record of the company building them is part of what you're buying. Chidi may have corrected course here, but trust takes time. For now, I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm not putting my reputation behind it with a full recommendation. I mean, you have got to weigh the pros and cons and decide for yourself. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking with me. I hope this helped you get a clear picture of what the GD Plus 4 can and can't do. I've got more Maker Hardware, new mini PCs, and a few open source projects in the pipeline. So if that sounds interesting, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Drop a comment if you've had an experience with the Plus 4 or just GD in general. I'd love to hear how your machines have held up. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.